Ashley Allen here on Radio Row for Nesson.com with Ed Tutel Jones. Ed, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. All right, so you actually have been to three Super Bowls, winning one. What is the atmosphere like here? How has it changed? Well, I, I played in Super Bowl X many years ago, and uh, even at Super Bowl X, we thought the media was off the chain, but it's no comparison. This is like night and day. And one of our concerns, even back then, was normally on each team, on both sides of the ball, you have about eight guys that get all the media attention during the, during the season. But come Super Bowl time, guys who've never done an interview before are requested to do a lot. So you, you're concerned about your team keeping their focus. Mm -hmm. And that today is even worse. And that would be my biggest concern if I were the coach or captain of the team. All right, Ed, so I want to talk about your career a little bit. It's extremely interesting to me. So you were in the league for a number of years, but then you left in 1979 to pursue a career in boxing. Tell me about that. Well, boxing has always been my favorite sport, even to this day. And uh, I was a fight fan. My father was a big fight fan. I fought Golden Gloves growing up in Tennessee, and I was denied the opportunity to fight for the championship. So I knew one day I would box. So after playing five years with Dallas, three Super Bowls, winning a championship, I said, you know, I've accomplished more than I ever thought I would. So I said, it's time for me to pursue that dream. And I did, and that one year, six fights, which was a lot, uh, was probably the best decision I ever made because after coming back, the next 10 years was 10 of the best years of my career. And how is training for a fight different than training for a football game? Totally different, and you're on your own. They like to isolate you. Uh, I've worked out six days a week. I've never been a runner, but I had to run, had to jog eight miles one day, 12 the next, six days a week. Very difficult, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but it also helped me when I came back to, to football because of the learning how to hit the speed bag, hitting the heavy bag, the jump rope, helped my hand-eye coordination, which means I still ran the same 40 time, but I reacted to situations a lot quicker, which made it seem like I was faster and quicker on the football field. All right, now, Ed, you were actually the guy marking up Joe Montana when he threw the famous catch. How did you feel when that whole thing went down? Uh, even to this day, uh, there's a bitter taste in my mouth. Uh, we felt that year we had the best team in football. In fact, we talked about it all week long. We said, guys, with the teams left, whoever win this game will win the Super Bowl. We knew there was no way Cincinnati would beat either team. And we thought we had them. And Joe, uh, Joe Montana, being the big playmaker that he is, he and Dwight Clark teamed up, made a big play. But even after the catch, we still thought we had an opportunity to win the game because we had time left and we had the big, best kicker in football. But we fumbled on the 50-yard line and it was over. All right, so you said it left a bitter taste in your mouth, but yes, you yes. do have one Super Bowl championship under your belt, which is more than a lot of people can say. What That's, was it like to win that Super Bowl? You know, it, I'll never forget, after winning the game, we were on the bus getting ready to go back to the hotel to celebrate. I was sitting next to my teammate, Harvey Morton. I said, Harvey, you realize tomorrow when we wake up, we are world champions. That's, Harvey was lost for words. Now, Harvey's never lost for words. But that's, an, that's a feeling that you have to live it to know what it's like. And I wish every player that meant something to the game could experience it. All right, so Carolina Panthers, Denver Broncos, what's your pick? Well, Denver is ranked number one in defense for a reason. I think that um, in order to win at any level in any sport, you have to have a good defense. But now Carolina have a good defense as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm going with Denver because they're ranked number one. DeMarcus Ware played for Dallas eight years. I had the opportunity to work with him when he came in as a rookie. He's a great guy. Missed those glory days in Dallas. I would love to see him get a ring, and I would love to see Manning go out with the championship. All right, Ed, so you are here today promoting GoBowling.com. Tell me about that. NFL Foundation, along with GoBowling.com, uh, team with Legacy Community for a big bowling event tomorrow at Lucky Strike. I love this event because it's the only event during the week here where fans have a chance to interact with the players. There will be at least 30 players, some of the best players ever put on a football uniform, there for four hours. So the guys look forward to signing autographs, taking photos with the fans, and bowling. I've been bowling all my life. That's the way we bonded when I was a kid. My mom and dad would take my brothers and sisters and I out bowling every Wednesday night. So it's something that I get excited about every year and looking forward to it. 
All right, guys, I'll make sure to check out goalbowling.com. Thanks, Ed, for being with us. Thanks for having me.